Perfect, 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 perfect. The competition work is hop on toe and then I murk it. Now open curtains and all these breezes getting shirtless. We all got purpose. Our baby girl just work it, work it. Perfect. Say that we're the only ones here is an idiotic statement. Ignorant. There's, yeah, there's what, a hundred billion galaxies out there? And you think that we're the only living conscious beings alive? That's, that's completely stupid. I, I don't believe that at all. Right. I'm with you 100%. And what's interesting is every year, right, we learn of a new number. Uh, scientists and astrologists and astronomers come out and they say, hey, now the number is, you know, 100 billion. Now it's a trillion now galaxies. The, now the last I heard was possibly 2 trillion See what I'm saying? Galaxies. The number only goes up. It doesn't go down. And then if you understand <laughs> quantum physics, you could have other dimensional realities. There may be a different vibrational plane where you have another 2 trillion galaxies. They're just overlaid each other but because they're at different frequencies you don't see them but sometimes they bleed over and maybe that's what goes in some of these phenomena are about it's almost like the matrix where it's a glitch in the matrix hmm. but if you know quantum physics postulates i think recently is 20 dimensions and so and they say the dimension the the different dimensions might be so small they collapse on each other and they're smaller than your hand but who's to say that our galaxy our universe is not the size of a hand to somebody else in a bigger universe. And I believe Michio Kaku mentioned that there is, uh, they, they theorize that a new universe is born every second. Could you that is fucking it, crazy. <laughs> you can so imagine that. it's two things you said, and I want to ask both of you this question right here, then I'll turn over to Mac to start talking because I'm talking way too much. <laughs> you, the Drake equation, you, the Matrix, the moving, and how it relates to daily life. So I'll let whoever wants to go first, please. We both said a lot. It's both very interesting. <laughs> yeah, man. Just, well, the Matrix was just, and it was the thing that impressed me about the Matrix, and I've watched it like the Avengers. I've watched it probably 25 times, and I always get something new out of it. But the Matrix was just a way to get you to think outside of the box. The greatest thing about the Matrix was that they had this idea that you're living in a simulated program that was fleshed out in such a way that it was so interesting that when they finally broke out of it and realized what reality actually was, it's like, wow, that's just something I didn't even imagine. I didn't even think of that. My brain never worked in that direction. And then all of a sudden you start seeing these things in the paper about, well, scientists say that we're living in an advanced aliens matrix. We're part of a computer program. And even if we are, it kind of doesn't matter if you, you know, if this is all about your personal existence and what you experience and you don't get to know that or never find out or even if you do, you still got to live your life and be yourself and not worry about these types of things. You know? mm. right. Yeah, you still, you still, not to cut you off, but you still experience things like hunger, thirst, you know, love, hate. Right. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, what's interesting is uh, I often wonder if you didn't have to worry about going to work every day to make money, to pay bills, buy, buy your food, if you didn't need to do all that and you just had all the money you needed and you already exhausted uh, hookers and hand grenades and all of the other things you might do, with it, right? <laughs> you get past all that, you're going to start asking yourself, what's it all about? You know, And every human being, I think, if they had the, 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 the right, perhaps, uh, you know, uprising culture or mental attitude to say, hey, listen, uh, life is not about, you know, being in the gang. Uh, and, and and getting into fights and, and and forcing your way to the top and you know cheating people out of their out of money or climbing the ladder the proverbial climb the ladder kind of thing keep preaching you know what I'm saying if life was more about hey how about some peace and love and understanding mm -hmm. and and let's think about why are also why are there so many cultures on this planet is it possible we all come from different planets is it possible that you know Ooh. every single culture on this planet originates from a different star. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Just to get a little deep on you there. Yeah, you better blow my goddamn mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, I already have trouble with this, man. You know what I'm saying? This is what goes through my mind. This has been going through my mind for a long, long time. This is what drives me because I'm a firm believer that this earth is an experiment. We are all being placed here to see if we can get along. And so far, we've been failing, but we've also been growing. So I think there's a percentage of the earth's population that has evolved. And there's a percentage that has not involved. And I'm talking about the 1% that are controlling the wars on this planet, not to get off topic. But the fact that there is such a diversity on this planet 
it naturally um, breeds war and fighting, and you know, you look different than me, mm-hmm. therefore we can't we can't agree. That kind of thing. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. But there is a large percentage, I believe, out there that does want to work together. I think it's the one percenters that don't. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because culturally, I think that across the world we have UFOs in common in every single continent, every single state. There is not a single part on this planet that has not had a UFO, either a cave painting, a person witnessing something, a photograph, this or is a true. story. This is you very true. Mm-hmm. So as a, as, a, as a world, a humanitarian, you know, idea, how about ufology? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> God damn. That's deep, right? No, yeah, I love it. Definitely it. deep. Man. It's like it's like almost like a this whole universe is or this whole world is like an episode of Black Mirror, like I said earlier. Right. And now <laughs> I'm now I'm, now I'm segueing back into the Drake equation because basically, um, was it Edward Drake? Is the name Edward Drake? Uh, no, it was um, Frank. Frank. Frank Drake. Frank Drake. I'm a, I'm a little messed up in my head right now. So, <laughs> I'll, 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 everybody listening, please do not you know take every word I'm saying as fact, but let me just prompt you into a certain direction. Check out Frank Drake and the Drake Equation is being updated every year. And basically, in a nutshell, what it is is that he postulated that if we as humanity equals one, and you multiply that by the known universe, you know, what is the probability of life? And at first, he came up with something ridiculous like 1%, which represented like thousands and thousands of probabilities of other life forms. And each year it would get updated and updated. And now we're somewhere into somewhere. They in, added to the equation. In the millions. Basically, it was. How many planets have life? How many planets have the Goldilocks life that's zone? Yeah, the Goldilocks zone. I'm right. familiar How with that one. How many lives have consciousness that right. uh, survive to get technology? How many start to travel the stars? How many right. survive their own atomic age? You know, and it goes on and on. And when you factor it in, it a lowball figure was 100 million civilizations right. in our galaxy alone. And here's another idea too. Whenever you look up at the sky, not all, but many, if not most, stars you see are suns that mm-hmm. have planets you can't see mm-hmm. around them, this right? is right and this is how they're discovering so many gold it could be somebody on others. that little dot staring back at us going i wonder right yeah, i wonder who's out, out there, there yeah. that's fucking crazy that's the dot you don't see star, though, the right? dot you don't see you know what i'm saying because you see the sun mm-hmm. you don't see the planet and now we're at 13.5 billion years from yeah. the, since the big bang or whatever whatever that event was you know What's interesting about that, if you really want to get deep, but I've studied remote hey, go viewing. Deep. Go deep, please. I've done remote viewing. I, I've Pause. actually had Pause. my consciousness separate from my body and do witness events and travel. Are you talking about astral projection? Yeah, astral projection and remote okay. viewing are very similar. Um, but remote view God, he found that it was a singularity, which was the Big Bang, and it was lonely, and so it exploded to get more life. Loneliness does suck, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I can feel that. Yeah, that's um, dude, that's absolutely crazy. How, how did you? So you say you ash projector, you say remote. What was it? Remote viewing. Yeah, it's basically. Um, I I one of the things, several things that fascinate me. I, I my degree is psychology, but I I read a lot. I have a lot of random knowledge about a lot of random things. But I really got into Carlos Castaneda's. Um, books about uh, learning from a shaman in Mexico, which, you know, may be fiction, may not be, but people don't remember these books. In the 70s, he was on the cover of Time magazine. It was the best-selling book in the world, um, Tales of Power and things like this. And I got interested in this type of other consciousness that was the, sh- the Toltec religion, the shamans from the old ages, from way back, thousands of years. And it's in every culture that they're wizards or whatever. And, you know, it's not somebody that has special powers. It's somebody that's in touch with consciousness. So anyway, you fast forward to I started getting into reading about remote viewing when that came out. And in college, I learned a very deep transcendental uh, meditation technique that enabled you to center on all the points of your body that are touching the bed, and then you do breathing. Basically, you you synchronize your brain into one tone. And then I ran into the I read the Robert Monroe book's Journey Out of Body, where the Faber Institute in Virginia was the place that the government, the twenty five million dollar remote viewing program, sent their people to learn remote viewing to Faber, Virginia, to learn this thing called Hemisync. Oh, hold a second. I got to interrupt you right there. There was a program from the government, $25 million for remote to learn viewing. remote viewing. Yeah. What year? This is the 80s. 80s. Oh, yeah. A lot of crazy shit happened in the 80s. How did, 
out of uh, right here in Virginia, out of uh, Fort, not Fort Meade, but uh, oh, and Fort Belvoir. Fort Belvoir, yeah, 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 yeah. It was Fort the headquarters okay. of the remote viewers. That's right in our backyard. And if you ever yeah, exactly. see, want to see a great movie about it, it's the Men Who Stare sure. at Ghosts. The Men Who Stare at Ghosts was George Clooney. That was right. that was okay. true. If you if you see the the copy that they you know with the extras on it, the guy says. People don't realize how much of this movie is actually true. This all happened right. exactly like it's portrayed in the movie. Well, in the eighties, uh, just real quick, uh, they were using remote viewers to find terrorists where they were hold, being held hostage. The Iran hostages were found right. with remote viewers, basically. Right. Holy, you mean the the Iran like nineteen? Was it Reagan's era? Yeah, that was probably seventy one, seven or mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, it no, might no, be that was Jimmy Carter in seventy seven. Yeah, okay, eighties, eighties, yeah. and that was found through with remote viewing. Remote, remote viewers, remote. yeah. And I've talked to the number one remote viewer. Um, um, what happened? Uh, this guy, John Robert Monroe, wrote these books called "Journey Out of the Bodies," and he um, spontaneously left his body his whole life. He knew when he would die. He actually, you know, saw himself in the past as a as a Roman warrior penned to the ground with a spear through his chest. And there's a lot of books I started reading about uh, reincarnation and things. There was actually a professor at University of Virginia that struck out to, to debunk reincarnation and ended up writing a book called Many Lives, Many Masters, where he almost many proved... Many Masters, Many Lives. Yeah, actually, where he almost yeah. proved reincarnation. Mm, excellent book. Highly recommend that book. But Might anyway, remote, remote viewing is... And I learned this for myself as a fact, and I'm just saying this personally, but I realized that there was... My consciousness and my perceptions could detach from my body and go witness events. And remote viewing, you're able to do that without regard to time or space. You can go back in the past, you can go in the future. And I experienced it four separate occasions myself where actually one time I witnessed events and when I told the person who was in those events what happened, they're like, how the hell did you know that? And I'm like, I was near the ceiling, floating near the ceiling. I could still feel my body and my bed. I was bilocated. So I knew I was laying in bed breathing, but at the other hand, the rest of me was floating in this room 10 miles away witnessing these events. So let me ask everyone here at this table, because you brought up a great point, and I just, I just want to touch on this one. You see, you had Howard Cyrus in the back. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. to come and get you. You, yeah, we, you don't want to be safe. We, your we in D.C., baby. Um, yeah, men in black coming for me. <laughs> right. You already talked about so sometimes, So this is what I've heard before about just time in general, that time is it's no, it's no such thing as the past, present, or future. That time is linear. So... Myself, I've had dreams, nothing crazy, you know, maybe myself drinking at a water fountain or myself uh, driving somewhere. And, you know, I wouldn't remember the dream when I wake up. But when I experienced that event weeks later, I was like, oh, shit, I saw this in a dream. Deja vu? Would that be deja vu? It's like, remember the past, though. Like, I've been here before. So is there is there a difference between that? I guess, yeah, I guess you could bring a deja vu too and lucid dream. So the dream happened before the event? The dream happened, like, uh, it'll be so, it'll be anything crazy. It'll be like, you know, like a 9 11 type event. It'll be just like, it could be us here just sitting here. And it may be a dream, like, oh, I had a dream about this last week. And I only remember it in that moment. Well, if you dream before it happened, that's precognition. So that's seeing a few moments ahead. Okay. Which, you know, if t time is more Or just of some a, really good weed. Hey, I'm looking at the camera right now. I am clean. <laughs> if you want to piss test me, come on, baby. Make it happen. Please time is on. a human construction, really. I think it's a... I think it's kind of made up. Um, Construct. Yeah. With Einstein's theory mm, that okay. as you approach the speed of light, time slows down to almost nothing. You know, if you left at the speed of light, came back, 100 years might pass and you were gone an hour. I mean, it's... You have this thing called entropy, entropy, where you can see things age. Like if you eat a bite of a fruit and set it down, it'll turn brown and it'll start to degrade. That's entropy. So you know things kind of that. That's what we kind of equate to time. Over time, something ages. We age over time. But I, I'm not sure if that's just not something we invented. You know, time could be this long line. That you can step anywhere on it. Well, also the Past, effects, present, the effects of time have to do with the amount of radiation we're absorbing too. If we had more filtration, yeah, well, then we yeah. wouldn't appear. When you start breaking down everything into a quantum level of 